Hello and welcome to another video from the events calendar. My name is James and today we're going to be talking about an add-on for the events calendar called community events. And what this add-on allows you to do is it allows you to allow your community to submit events to your website. So you don't have to log into the back end and create all the events that you want to feature. Uh, you can allow people to come to your website and go to a certain page on your website, fill out a form, and that will actually submit an event to your website. Now you can choose to restrict that page. Um, you can choose to make those events go public immediately, or you can choose to make it so that you have to go in and approve them. So, you know, cause you never know what someone's gonna try to submit to your website, right? So you might want to just take a glance at them and click a button to publish them before they go live. But either way, you have the freedom to kind of do whatever you want. And we're going to take a look at that plugin today and show you how easy it is to allow people to come to your website and submit an event. Let's check it out. Okay, so what I have here is just a basic uh, WordPress website. I have gone ahead and installed the events calendar, which you can find in the WordPress repository. Or if you have an account over at the events calendar, you can, of course, download it there from your account. And then the community events plugin, you will need to get that from your account. That is a paid add-on. So you can head on over to the eventscalendar.com and you can get this and many other add-ons from the products tab of that website. So I've got both of these plugins installed and activated. And then I just went ahead and installed the Cadence theme. I'm not using a starter template. I'm just, just using the, the default uh, theme there. So what I'm going to do here is just real quickly kind of show you how easy this is. I haven't actually done anything yet other than installing these two plugins. So um, if you'll notice, we already have under this events tab, we have a page here that says community submit events and community my events. If we go on over here to pages, we don't see those actual pages here. So this isn't, you know, kind of like WooCommerce where WooCommerce creates, you know, three or four pages when you install the plugin. You're not going to find that page under your uh, pages list here, but the page does exist and you can link to it. So if we go here to community submit event, the first thing you could do is just grab this URL here and you could go back to your admin. You could go to appearance menus and custom links. We'll first have to create a menu. Uh, let's just call it main menu and we'll say it's the primary and then we can go to custom links we could just paste in that url and say submit an event we could spell submit right if we want to and we'll click add to menu and of course don't forget to click save which my face is preventing there we go so that's the first thing you probably want to do. I mean, maybe not, but if you want people to be able to easily find this page, you know, then you probably want to go ahead and add it to your event like I just did there. So now if I'm a user coming to your website, I can see right here, oh, submit an event, click on that. And then I see this form, which just already exists. You didn't have to set this form up. This form already exists as soon as you install the community events plugin. So now I can go ahead and say, let's call it Whiskey Friday. That's an event that happens around here that I kind of like come drink some whiskey with some cool people whatever type in a nice you know engaging description there to make people want to come to your event um, let's go ahead and say it's on a friday the 28th 8 a.m is a little too early i think to be drink drinking whiskey with some cool people let's say like after work you know 5 p.m or something um and it's gonna go to i don't know i'm old so 8 p.m is, is about past my bedtime we can add an event image I'll just grab this one right here that I found before I recorded the video. Looks like a fun little image for drinking some whiskey. Event status, we'll just go ahead and say scheduled. And then here for the venue, you know, the venue is, you know, where the event is happening. So you can type the name if it's, you know, if it's some kind of building that has a cool name. If there's really no name for the building, you can just put in the address. You can fill out the organizer. So maybe this event is being put on by an organization. You know, you don't have to fill these things out, but they're there in case you want to, you know, just give a little bit more information about this event. The organizer could just be a person and maybe you want to put a phone number so people can get a hold of them if they have questions about the event. Um, the organizer could be, you know, an organization, a business or a nonprofit or something. And there can be multiple organizers. Maybe there's two organizers getting together to put on an event so you can add multiple organizers. I'm just going to say some venue. I want you guys to see what this information looks like on the front end after we're done creating this. So some organizer. So we've got some information filled in there. Um, if there's an external link to your website, 
you know, maybe there's a website or like eventbrite or meetup.com, whatever you could put in um, an external event here. You know, I'll just say it's uh, eventbrite.com slash whatever. I don't know how their URLs work there, but we'll just throw in um, the URL there just so we can see what that looks like. And the cost, you know, we'll put that's $5 and we'll click submit. So now if I go back to the back end here and I go to events, you will see that we have an event here and it does say draft. Now you can change that to automatically publish if you would like, you know, personally, I don't recommend it because you just never know what kind of people are going to be out there trying to submit some weird stuff. So I recommend leaving it this way so that you can just take a glance and, you know, um, see what the event looks like before it goes live on your website and people can see it. So you can kind of scroll through, look at the description, make sure the picture is appropriate. And if you like it, you can um, come up here to status draft and you can click edit and you can choose. Oh, actually, we have to go back to events. Right here, we can do quick edit and published. Click update. And now the draft moniker is gone. So if we click on view here, we can see the event. And it's just our domain name slash event slash the name of the event. And here's what it looks like on the front end. There's the title that they gave it. The cost is right there. The date, picture. And then here's all that information we filled out, all that all that totally real, not fake at all information. 1234 Nowhere Street in some place, Idaho. There's a little map, phone number, a link to that website. So you know, just a pretty robust little event that uh, you didn't have to do. Your community member did this for you. And so you can kind of use this to, you know, kind of build your own sort of uh, eventbrite or meetup.com kind of website, you know, maybe for your local area, you could create a website that's a one-stop shop where people can go to your website and they can see all sorts of events that are happening, you know, where you live. And you don't have to do a ton of work for that. You crowdsource that work. You let the community do that by creating those events for you. Now, I do also want to show you there's another add on that just kind of works. You know, it can work with this plugin a little bit, and that's called virtual events. So our virtual events add on does is it allows you to create events that are virtual. If you notice, you know, this event sort of implies in person, right? So there's a venue. So, OK, I got to go to this address to attend um, the event. There's no links to, you know, like join a Zoom call or a Google Meet or anything like that. So if you want to create a virtual event that, that people can join, you know, through uh, some sort of video conferencing app, you would need to use the virtual events plugin for that. And you can do that to create your own events. And it also works with community events so that your community members, again, can come here and they can create an event and they can choose to make that event a virtual event if they want to. So I'm just going to come back here and we're going to install that plugin. Now, again, you'll have to go to the eventscalendar.com uh, to find that plugin. And so I'm going to do that real quick and I'll be back to you in a second. Okay, the virtual events add-on has been installed and activated. And so again, without having to do anything, um, let's just go ahead and check out that submit event form and see if anything is different. So, yep, right here we have a section that did not exist before, configure virtual event. Now we have some options here. First of all, is it a straight up virtual event or is it a hybrid event where people could show up in person and virtually? So you can choose that here. Here's where you put in a video, maybe you want to um, create like a Zoom link that people could join. Uh, you could just paste in that uh, video URL here um, or YouTube live Vimeo video. And then you can choose if you want to embed that video, you know, into the event itself, or if you just want to, you know, to just have a link that they click on and then navigate away from your website to that link. And then you want to choose if it shows immediately when the event is published or if, you know, it doesn't display there until the event actually starts. So maybe you publish the event today, the event is happening in two weeks. This stuff that you put up here won't actually show up in the event until the day that the event starts. And then you can show it to everyone or only logged in users. And then there's just a little virtual event label that you can choose if you want that to show up. So when people are scrolling through events, they can see which ones are virtual and which ones aren't because there'll be a little virtual event icon there. So 
pretty cool. This is the only difference. Now that we've added the virtual events plugin, this will be the only difference. Everything else here you'll see is the same as we saw before. Pretty simple. Again, you didn't have to actually do any setup. All you did was install these plugins and all this functionality was there right off the bat. Now, I'm not going to go too deep into the settings, but I do just want to let you know that there are some settings you can look at. So um, if you go to events, settings, there's a community tab right here, and there's just a whole bunch of stuff you can uh, you can do here that just helps you you know have a little bit more control over how your community events works. For instance, you watched me create a brand new organizer and a brand new venue. Maybe you don't want to allow them to do that. Maybe you want to create organizers and venues, and right over here, organizers and venues, and then they have to choose from a list of ones that you've already created. You can you know check these boxes to make that happen. So there's other settings like that in here. So definitely recommend taking a quick gander at those settings just to see what kind of options are available to you. So um, I think that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you found that useful. Um, Community Events is a very powerful plugin that just allows you to set up a really cool website that doesn't require very much work from you. It's always nice to be able to delegate, <laughs> you know, the work to the community whenever possible. So check out this plugin, guys, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.